I'm originally from England, um, and I, from a very early age, this was something I knew that I wanted wanted to do, um, and it's it's something as as a chef, it's something you live and breathe. I mean, obviously, you can teach skills. Um, it's very hard to teach someone a passion for something they do, and it's something that throughout the 28 years of my culinary career, and even prior to that, um, it's a passion I've always held. I mean, I, uh, you know, and it's helped me to travel all over the world. I mean, it's the structure and the discipline of a kitchen is shaped me, I think, in, in everyday life. Um, you know, whether my wife agrees with that or not, I, I don't know, but, um, you know, it's just, somebody, I'm somebody that enjoys food. I mean, I enjoy eating food, I, I enjoy shopping for food, uh, just being around food, uh, connecting food with nature and the gardening. And I think a lot of those influences came when, when I was a kid. Um, I was fortunate I had grandparents that believed in the, the traditions of gardening and, and making things and making food and the family meal, um, as opposed to just like, you know, maybe like I'll go watch the TV and hear some food. Um, you know, for me, food is about an experience. It's, it's, I mean, you know, the physical function of actually eating uh, is necessary, but food itself, uh, I think, should be about experience and, and, and family and shared memories. And, you know, those are some of the things that I think, as I continue to move through this, uh, this career at different levels, 28 years later, that hasn't gone away. So if you hold that passion inside you, it's gonna translate in everything you do and messages you may pass on to other people uh, and people that you come across. And then once you get into the traveling aspect of uh, hospitality and, and food, um, I mean, it just broadens and increases the passions and the knowledges that you have because now you're experiencing cultures and cuisines globally. Um, and it just keeps going, so it's never ending. It's a never, it's, it's never boring. Um, so, you know, that's kind of kind of me in a in a, in a nutshell. It's a very traditional guy. Somebody who wants to be a chef, um, you have to want to do it because it's what you want to do. It's not. It's it's not something you should do because you think it would be kind of cool to do it, and what you may see on TV or. I mean, the modern chef is different completely now, obviously. Um, it's a very rewarding career. If you have aspirations to travel, it's gonna facilitate that. Um, but you have to have, going in, you have to have real expectations of what's gonna happen when you come out. Um, you know, there's so many different programs available now, but you, you're not gonna come out there with a huge salary, you're not gonna get a TV deal, you're not gonna be running some kitchen somewhere with people under you. But if you work hard and you study, it's an ageless industry. And when I say ageless, I mean, if you have the right aptitude and passion and, and, and you put forth the right effort, um, you can hold a position of authority at a really young age. It's, it's all skill driven. It's not, you don't need to be like, oh, well, you know, you can't be a chef because you're not like 30. Um, it's a great industry if you're gonna go on a career there's a lot of um, career change uh, cooks now that suddenly say, you know what, I want to do that. I want to have a passion for it. I want to go back to school and learn how to become a cook. Um, but yeah, just really have a realistic expectation of what you are getting into uh, and why you're in school, work in restaurants. Because you'll, you'll, you'll find out real fast if that's somewhere you want to be, the, the culture, the hours. Um, but there's so many aspects of, of, uh, of food and service, schools, uh, you know, corporate dining, banquet dining, freestanding restaurants, hotels. So, you know, here in Central Florida, the, the amusement parks. So there's different avenues if you're around food um, and it can lead you into all different types of roles. I mean, you may get into a hotel and say, you know what, this is not for me. Uh, I want to go work at the front desk. I want to work in finance. I want to be in accounting. But it's ultimately, it's all hospitality, regardless of where you work. So if you're not that type of individual, then you're not really gonna work out. The higher you go, obviously, your responsibilities change. Um, you go from being maybe the artist to the artist teacher. 
but you still maintain the artist's eye. So initially, in your early career, I would say artistry plays a huge role, more so than um, being the manager or worrying about finances or food cost or you know guest comment cards or those all those things. As you progress, the pendulum swings a little bit more the other way. So you have to maintain your artistry uh, and your professionalism, but then as you become a manager, it's inherent that you understand all those things because now you're responsible for a different aspect. Um, and the most critical piece that I believe, as, as you get older, you have a certain responsibility to teach those that come after you um, so that they have the tools to keep this industry going. I mean, one of the challenges we have right now is there's just not enough cooks coming into the industry for the growth of hospitality, especially here in Central Florida, but you know, as a nation also, I mean, it, it's a challenge. The, the supply is, is, is not there, and we, we struggle all the time with staffing levels and all that. So it's important to, to give back what you've been given. Um, it's a balance. They would tell you there's a balance. They're equally important, but as you get older and uh, you have a more established role or a higher role, then obviously the managerial piece comes in and you have to make sure the people that are actually doing the cooking, you know, can put on the plate your philosophy or your, your, your artistry by physically doing it. And then it's more of a supervisory, but I mean, I cook every day. I have to, I can't not do it. Um, I mean, it's a good, you know, good way to shake the cobwebs out of the head if, if you've got like complex projects that you know you're trying to do a report and send it to the general manager or the owner or a regional vice president they're looking for information so you know i'll come and go over here and i'm just going to kind of relax and cook cook a little bit and, and plus it's, it's a good barometer of and you've got to maintain your skills i mean you have to and so you know early part of your career the artistry is is more dominant and then as you progress you become a leader um, because you know, even in the, um, you know, the, the, the kitchen system, the hierarchy, as you move through, you will become responsible for individuals until finally when you reach the top, you're responsible for everybody. Um, the current, current role that I hold right now is I'm responsible for both back and front of house. Um, so the entire food and beverage operation. So I'm kind of making that transition from maybe being a chef, which I, I fight with every day, um, into more of a restaurateur. So I think if you understand all the aspects of it, you're going to be more successful and it's going to come across in the product that you're putting out there for the consumer. So yeah, depending on where you are in your career, um, but if you have those traits, then you, you'll do well. You'll do well. Crimson Tavern is two years, two, two, and, two and a half years old now. Um, it was born out of a an idea where we was thinking about the garden first and foremost. Um, Mar Marriott International, their food philosophy is, is always been about chef driven and chef inspired. It, it's a culture that we've created for maybe in the last 10 years. We've kind of like gone back to, okay, we, we can't just be the same everywhere in the world. We need to recognize um, the locations we're in and some of the trends and what our consumers want but still maintain our responsibility as a global brand in sustainability and the environment and carbon footprint and local and these things. Well, you know, as that momentum builds within the industry, you know, the, the local, the farm to table, the chef driven, these are all becoming, you know, like overused words now. But that's been the philosophy from our corporate team for yeah, the last 10 years. Uh, simply Chef Crafted is the message that, that they send out. Um, so in the back of the hotel, there was a, uh, a volleyball court, a sand volleyball court. And many, for many years, I was like, you know what, that's a waste, we don't do it, I need a garden, I'd like to have a garden. So it's, you know, it's like I'm mean, a child, I said, oh please, can I, can I please, please. And in the end, they said, okay, go and get a, a business plan and put it together and, and tell me why I, I should build this garden. Um, so, you know, I, I went through the steps and, and I put forward this idea and said, you know, okay, well, we have the garden, and where Crimson, Crimson Tavern is today used to be a steakhouse, and it was very successful. And obviously the economy, uh, no one could have predicted what was gonna happen for the economy in 2009, 
Um, so we saw dwindling business, uh, travelers, the whole thing. So the decision was made to close the restaurant. So the space was already here. The kitchen was already here. Um, so as we're going into talks about the garden and doing the garden, so we know we really need another restaurant that's really gonna put our footprint down and it's gonna be not only somewhere where the local area can come, but it's gonna be a selling point for bringing group and corporate traveler in here that when they do get here, they don't wanna leave. So Crimson Tavern itself was kind of born. It was kind of an approachable restaurant that was based on you know, local, uh, local sustainable um, farmers and farms and artisans, and then plus whatever we could grow out the garden. And then following the principal guidelines of, you know, sh just chef crafted. So we, we opened up and um, the garden was built and um, now the garden's matured to the point where we're adding and we're really seeing some of the products that we can really start to bring in. And I see it as a five year project before I get it to really where I want to go. Um, we're anticipating an olive harvest this year. We have olive trees out back. So we want to get some of that going into the restaurant um, and then building a team that shares the same, same philosophy as me, really. Um, you know, making jams and jellies and pickles and hot sauces and kind of some of the stuff that I did when I was a kid. Um, and just putting forward food that is honest and has a story behind it and, you know, bringing people in. And, and they can leave and say, you know what, that, that was kind of cool. Um, we didn't expect that. And, you know, anytime we can, can have that kind of memory on somebody or, you know, uh, create an experience for somebody, then we've achieved what we need to achieve.